This is Somerville, Massachusetts. Although incorporated as a city in 1871, this area was first settled in 1630, only 10 years after the Pilgrims first landed. Now it is one of the independent municipal spokes radiating from the Boston hub, a center of a network of highways and railroads reaching all New England, a major residential community, an industrial focal point of the Commonwealth. Because of its definitely residential character, self-rule prized in Somerville. It is this love for self-government that gives the city its vigor and its virility. A city rich in heritage, steeped in tradition, vigorous in daily life, and confident in its future. This is Somerville. This is your city. Almost four years ago, the people of Somerville elected as their mayor a dedicated, sincere businessman, a man who had pledged an administration for the people. It is now time to look over his record, his record of promises and his record of action. Let's start with his inaugural address. It was here in the new public works buildings that a fabulous parade of progress began. Under the direction of Commissioner of Public Works, Walter J. Manning, this major municipal department was equipped and organized. As efficiency leads to economy, proper equipment was procured, tools necessary to produce desired results. Office installations were set up and many necessary facilities were installed such as modern ticket printing gasoline pumps and large storage tanks. Once a hollow shell, this building is now incorporating some of the finest machinery designed for community progress. A steam cleaning unit was installed, complete with steam generator. The paint shop has repainted 38 trucks and a variety of other equipment ranging from police boxes to traffic and street signs. The building has a complete modern electrical system, individual services for each department, and protected by a standby generator in the event of power failures. The building division is set up to repair and maintain all municipal and school buildings. Band saws, circular saws, surface and thickness planers, and a variety of other equipment had to be obtained to do the job better at a smaller cost. Valuable additions to the Public Works Department were the two Huff payloaders purchased by the Donovan administration. These machines are extremely versatile, designed to accomplish many types of work, ranging from excavation to the handling of sand and gravel and allied operations such as snow removal. Of primary importance in the proper maintenance of equipment is proper lubrication. The city's new department is completely equipped to handle the lubrication of all city-owned equipment. Other necessary additions to the Public Works Department included a truck-mounted air compressor, a modern hydraulic cleaning machine for catch basins, two new international dump trucks, and a trailer-mounted air compressor. Your whole evening could be taken up in showing pictures of the many improvements and equipment that have been added to the city's departments but only the highlights of activity which has characterized the Donovan administration and the need that dictated such activity shall be shown. The condition of some of our rolling stock was especially critical in the sanitary department. To tolerate conditions and practices which could possibly jeopardize the physical well-being of the people is to violate the trust placed in an administration by the electorate. The old sanitary trucks were not only dilapidated in appearance, 
but were most inefficient in operation and placed extreme hardships upon the employees. Dusts and cinders could not be controlled, and the streets of the city were sometimes more littered after the rubbish collection than before, remember? The need for decisive action was apparent. The city government responded by purchasing 12 new load packer trucks. The cost of this fleet is made up in the savings realized in their operation. Only three men are now needed for each truck. The extra men in the sanitary division have been absorbed in other divisions of the public works to fill vacancies. Thus, a saving of 25% in manpower cost per truck. The design of the new trucks eliminates the need for high lifts of weighty barrels and has greatly reduced injuries to the men and compensation cases and sick leave. Three auxiliary units are maintained by the city to round out the efficient program of the sanitary division. These vehicles are used in narrow alleys and private ways and for bulky loads ranging from building debris to Christmas trees. This is practical progress. Somerville leads the nation in urban redevelopment. Through Mayor Donovan, Somerville was the first city in the nation to take advantage of federal aid to redevelop industrial areas and attract new businesses to the city. Structures such as these are being eliminated through the city's continuing program of neighborhood renewal. Buildings of this sort constitute a hazard to health and safety and a needless expenditure of public funds. Some 30 dilapidated buildings have already been raised. The redevelopment area is now ready for new industry. The combination of the city's own program of urban renewal together with urban redevelopment properly administered, will return to the city millions of dollars of taxable property. Private industry has shown great confidence in Somerville by their unprecedented building programs. Swift and Company is investing millions of dollars in a plant modernization and expansion program. Cot rebuilt here. Statler Tissue has increased their plant facility. First National Stores expanded. And Ford has chosen its Somerville plant to assemble new Edsel cars. These are but a few examples of industrial expansion in Somerville during the last four years. This is practical progress. Mayor Donovan's survey of the school buildings of the city disclosed some serious inadequacies. Classrooms, gyms, auditoriums, and other facilities were insufficient or outmoded in many important respects. The Donovan administration continued its program of action. Dangerous situations were remedied, unsightly conditions corrected, and progressive steps taken. Inadequate harmful lighting is being replaced by new fixtures. More than half the classrooms in the city have already been redecorated. Classrooms have been modernized. Many have new desks. Others have had the desks refinished. Established in an atmosphere conducive to study, the youth of Somerville are presented greater advantages by the school system. Blackboards are now a soft green to eliminate glare. Good physical tools are as necessary for good education as are good teachers. Here is a future CPA. Oops, oh well. Frequent breakdowns in the heating systems have been practically eliminated through proper maintenance and constant care of the boilers. I pledged to build a new Pope school. And a new Pope school was built. The children of the Union Square area had been inconvenienced long enough. Another new school, the Leon M. Conwell School in West Somerville. Overcrowded conditions in the Cutler School necessitated a new facility in the western area of the city. 
This new building provides a kindergarten play area separate from that of the older children and access to all play areas from every classroom. This is the old Glein School in the Winter Hill area, which was beyond rehabilitation. The housing project, which was constructed in this area, created the need for expanded school facilities. The Arthur D. Healy School meets this requirement for additional space and allowed the abandonment of the old Glein School. Utilizing safety and progress as guides, these new schools have introduced the finest of modern conveniences. Attractive as well as useful, the three new schools should be a source of pride to all residents. Yes, three new schools and a new high school. As a result of two disastrous fires in the Somerville High School Central Building, the central section and many parts of the two wings of the school were rebuilt and modernized. Safety features were established, such as fireproof stairwells, complete new wiring, a new communication system, and teacher-controlled electrical laboratory equipment. Classrooms have been completely remodeled and modernized, including all new utilities, ceilings, floors, walls, and considerable new furniture. The cafeteria and auditorium were also completely renovated and modernized. The Department of Public Works, the police and fire departments, have taken every step to ensure the safety of the children, not only in the new, but in and around all schools. Mayor Donovan has also augmented the safety patrol system through the cooperation and leadership of Officer Kelly, who has a special assignment as school safety officer. Officer Kelly, a well-known personality to every school child, has developed the finest school safety patrol system in the state. This is practical progress. Eight new police cars were purchased. With the off-street parking problem developing and with the increase in parking meters, it became important to establish a special patrol to enforce their use. A special car was assigned to this group. To provide emergency carriers for accidents, the station wagon type patrol car was introduced, another Donovan first. The city ambulance makes approximately 2,300 calls a year, an average of more than six per day. The station wagon has proven its value not only in supplementing the ambulance work, but also for emergency accident cases, making over a thousand runs each year. Another innovation, started early in 1954, was the establishment of a crime prevention bureau in the police department. This bureau has been most aggressive in holding to a minimum the number of crimes that beset a city of this size. For the maximum protection of the homes and businesses of the city, new fire apparatus is imperative. A large percentage of the fire equipment of Somerville was outmoded and in sore need of replacement. With the advice and counsel of the fire chief, a program of replacement, modernization, and rehabilitation began. Once again, a pledge made four years ago by Mayor William J. Donovan became a reality. Six new fire apparatus was purchased. Two lathered trucks, two pump wagons, and two hose wagons have replaced the city's older equipment. Truly, these are the results of an administration of action, progress, and service to the people of Somerville. This is progress. This is practical progress.
New swings were installed in most of the city's playgrounds, many of which are equipped with the new safety seat. Playground lighting was installed at Lincoln, Albion, and Shaw. And full field lighting for night baseball at Trum and Glen Street recreation fields. Basketball courts were installed at Trum, Glen, and many other of the city's play areas. New Little League fields were established in eight of the 12 playgrounds. Tot lots at Trum Field and North Street have been invaluable for the benefit of the smaller children of the city. This was an abandoned building. Great satisfaction was received when it was remodeled at a small cost. A program of arts and crafts was established and is being received with great enthusiasm. A method of providing the senior citizens with interest and purpose has rounded out the city's recreation program. From tooling and leather craft for the youngsters to ceramics for the adults, the program has become a productive means of utilizing free time of the citizens of the community. This is practical progress. One of the major programs of the Public Works Department was the reconstruction and improvement of the city's streets. Reconstruction, not just resurfacing, was the byword. It would have been much simpler to have made the streets look safe, and the city government appeared to have accomplished much more by just resurfacing. But the job had to be done right. Curbstones, damaged and worn through years of service, had to be straightened. Corners were widened, providing still another safety feature for the citizens of the community. The city has suffered much from these unsightly conditions. These sidewalks were removed, and with them, many lawsuits against the city. And they were replaced by miles and miles of new sidewalks, most with concrete, some hot top. The sidewalk construction and repair program was stepped up in conjunction with the record road building project. Trouble with overhead electrical wires was kept to a minimum despite record winter freezes and storms due to the highway division's efficient tree topping program. In addition to the hundreds of trees which were trimmed of dead or loose branches and pruned away from wires throughout the city, many were topped to stump level and then completely removed. Emphasis in this program was placed in areas of highway and sidewalk reconstruction to ensure the work done in these projects would not have to be duplicated at a later date as a result of damages from dead and diseased trees and roots growing up through the streets and sidewalks. No unnecessary expense was incurred, but no dangerous situation was allowed to exist. This is practical progress, and practical progress includes safety. Nearly 100 new roads were constructed. State funds made available to the city enabled the Donovan administration to build these roads at a greatly reduced cost. Hundreds of traffic regulatory signs were installed. Traffic lights were added to the city's busiest intersections, providing visibility of signal despite large trucks and buses. Lights were installed at corners, which presented a hazard to pedestrian and traffic safety, and some existing lights were replaced. Others were set back from the curbs to avoid damage from the overhang of parking trucks. Five new parking areas. Prominent among the many new facilities introduced by the Department of Public Works are the off-street parking areas. 
A modern 62-car lot was constructed in Davis Square on the corner of Day and Herbert Streets. And, as a convenience to neighbors, its four mercury vapor lamps were timed to shut off at 11 p.m. To facilitate the use of this parking area, the one-way direction of traffic on Herbert Street was reversed, and the intersection of Chester and Herbert Street was recut for easier turning. Two non-revenue parking areas were constructed on city-owned land adjacent to firehouses. These areas are for the convenience of the citizens and greatly assisted the city during snowstorms and the cleaning of nearby streets. Work is now underway on a 90-car lot at Magoon Square, and attention is being given to plans for an off-street parking area in Union Square. The construction and cost and the maintenance of these parking areas is paid out of parking meter receipts. The street sweeping program of the city was stepped up. Three additional sweepers were added to promote the welfare of the citizens by the prompt, efficient removal of dirt and waste from the city streets. This is practical progress. The Donovan administration's projects also included the rebuilding of Prospect Hill Tower, the new lights in the Central Library, and the painting of the branch libraries. The new Flanagan Auditorium at Southern Junior High School. Somerville leads the nation again. A dream house for the aged, now being constructed on Highland Avenue, it will incorporate the finest facilities of a modern apartment house. The city hall was painted. New lights were installed on Broadway. And a permanent memorial to those citizens who served in World War II was constructed. This is practical progress. Progress despite Hurricane Carol. Mayor Donovan had been in office but a few months when that devastating storm struck Somerville. Every municipal building was damaged. Roofs, chimneys, skylights, gutters, and downspouts all needed repair. Practically every street in the city was blocked. Progress despite Hurricane Edna. Eleven days later, another wave of destruction hit the city. Progress despite two major fires in the high school. The damage was so severe that the central building had to be closed. The roof had to be raised, and many of the classrooms were completely destroyed. The rebuilding of the central section and the two wings were so extensive that the city has virtually a new high school. Progress despite the St. Patrick Day blizzard and the storms that followed left 44 inches of snow in 23 days. Remember? Progress despite flash floods. Drains, sewers, gutters, and streets were damaged severely. There have been few periods in the history of the city that have been so disastrous. Unexpected, uncontrollable quirks of nature fell heavily on Somerville. And it is the mark of a great administration that can not only recover the losses quickly, but develop such extensive progress throughout its term. Almost four years ago, the people of Somerville elected as their mayor a dedicated, sincere businessman. A man who had pledged an administration for the people of Somerville. You have seen briefly his record, his record of promises and his record of action. Every day during his administration, progress has been made, but there is still much to be done. The program of school rehabilitation must be continued. More housing is needed for the aged. There are still many streets that need to be reconstructed or repaired. Some brick and uneven sidewalks are still in existence. They must be eliminated. 
every effort must be made to protect our city against the loss of homes for road construction under the federal and state highway program. More new industry must be encouraged to come to Somerville. Proper public services and improvements must be judiciously planned within the city's financial ability to pay. How can we be sure that these objectives will be accomplished? By the re-election of Mayor William J. Donovan, a proven executive, a dedicated public official. With your help and that of your friends, he will be re-elected and the program of practical progress for Somerville will continue.